All right, everyone, welcome back to this once more replay cast. Random Reddit casting host Beef here, joined once again by Snow. How you doing, Shay? Doing well this morning, Kyle. And yourself? I'm doing pretty well. I'm in a little bit of pain right now, but we won't go into that because we have a game of StarCraft to cast. So let's get right on into it. Once again, we do have replays coming from reddit.com slash r slash cast it. And uh, this is going to be a, a high master's replay. But first of all, let's introduce the players. In the top right-hand corner, we do have the Red Terran. He is SCS Lyra. Across the blue Zerg, Nezi. Yeah, so as we mentioned, this is going to be a high masters game here on uh, the newest map to be added to the ladder. This is going to be Metropolis, a map that was actually developed by GSL and uh, added to their league about uh, three, four months ago now. And seemed to be pretty successful there. And so we're giving it a shot here on the ladder. Well, how have your experiences been with this map so far, Shay? I've only played on this a couple times so far, and I actually really like it. The, I mean, the chokes are, you know, really good chokes on it, I found, especially for Terran. Um, and especially with this sort of spawn here, it's really easy to do drops from the Terran's perspective. So, as a Terran, I approve this map. Yeah, we do see the uh, players actually spawning in close by air right now. A drone is going to be making its way over into the Terran's base, and the uh, Terran has not actually dropped a Rax yet, going for gas before Rax, and the drone... Well, he does have, he has actually get. a proxy Rax going down here, just by the uh, Zerg's natural. Yeah, he most certainly does. Way to pick that up. And so that proxy Rax is going to be able to put a little bit of pressure on there. We're going to see a tech lab coming down, so I'd expect to see Reaper, possibly even some Marauder play. Because he has also a refinery down, which is interesting. Um, would have expected off the top of my head Hellion play, but this is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, this is actually a lot different. Um, I saw a Marauder play coming out of this in the GSL last night. We're going to see Reaper here against the Zerg. Um, but yeah, this Marauder play was really something cool. Uh, they proxied a Rax against another Terran and pumped four Marauders, and then pushed when it got to about three and it really, really ended up being effective against Hellions and Marines. And the, uh, the Terran player, I believe it was OGS Supernova against Startail's Virus, ended up getting a really large advantage. But here we do see a bunker coming down from the uh, Terran player, going to be able to put some serious pressure with that Reaper onto this building. And we do see drones being pulled off the line, but that Reaper is really going to be a deterrent for them to get in there. And the I mean, he has no queen yet. I mean, it's just... He really just has a smorgasbord here. Yeah, the uh, the Zerg is really going to have a tough time taking care of this properly micro. That Reaper should not take any damage from Zerglings or drones. Getting right into that bunker with a huge range and damage. Yeah, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And second Reaper, there's now two Reapers out, and another uh, Bunker. And if there's a Queen out now, making those Reapers a little bit less effective. Two Queens out, one at the natural, one at the main. And he's got to get those into that Bunker if he wants yeah. to keep them alive right now. The SCV does end up going down, and there's not another one being sent right away. So there is not going to be any repair on this Bunker, and the Queens are actually pretty effective against the Reapers. The Reapers don't do a whole lot of damage to Queens, but look at that Micro on the Reapers. One of them does end up going down. But all these Zerglings are about one shot away. The Reaper's going to try to get back into the base right now, do a little bit of scouting information and a little bit of drone harass, but that bunker is going to be going down. No salvage on it just yet. A little bit uh, weird that the salvage doesn't go down, but the other Reaper that was made is going to head on home for now. And at uh, home for the turn, we do see a factory going down. And uh, Expo as well. Certainly. Should be a little, he's getting a bunker as well. It's making it a little bit easier to defend because he does have a boat. Six, and a little bit more than that, about eight lanes coming in on him right now. Definitely. I don't know if this bunker's going to be done in time. In fact, well, mm -hmm. the Zerg's going to oh, hesitate. Oh, he's around. You're doing a favor. No, no, he's going back. Yeah, with the Zerg hesitating there, that might have been the time that the uh, Terran actually needed with that Some Reaper. Great up on positioning the on that Reaper, and look, he turns right around. Yeah, definitely. We do see uh, an Overlord hovering above both of the gases of the Terran, so the Zerg is very well aware. Oh, and the Reaper goes down. Very nice control with the Zerglings there. A little bit of a slip up on the Terran's part, but the, the uh, Zerg is very aware that this Terran has taken two gases right now. He's able to click on those and see exactly how much gas he has, so even though he hasn't seen something like Starport, he knows the Terran's heavy on gas and that a possibility of something like Cloak Banshee 
might be coming. Although, do keep in mind there is only one worker on that extra gas. Ah, uh, that is true. So that's a little bit interesting. So we do see a Banshee coming out, but at this time... And a Hellion. Doesn't, he doesn't have enough money for Cloak. Uh, no gas. So we'll see. The uh, Zerg, otherwise playing very standard back home. Just getting uh, Zerging speed finishing up right now. But other than that, no tech choices that have been made. He's grabbing his third, which of course the Terran sees with that scouting rack. Yeah, certainly. Scouting rack's a little bit like a scouting overlord, except one's a production facility and one's a, you know, an overlord. Oh. See, so I find the choice of Helen here really interesting. Yeah, I think it's more the fact that he's just going to be producing a couple of Hellions because he's got that factory and excessive minerals rather than yeah. anything else. We do see Cloak, and we coming cloak out going now. down now. Yep. This factory is going to be making its way home. See, interestingly, he kind of tipped his hand there using the Banshee to kill the Ling of the Zelnog as opposed to letting his um, Hellions do it. Yeah, a little bit odd, especially with Cloak, that he's going to uh, show his hand that early, like you said. Tipping his hand, for sure. And the spores do go down. These Italians with some very nice positioning there, taking minimal damage and maximizing their effect against the Zerglings. What the Zerg's actually done here is uh, take his queens off of creep, and that's actually what the Banshee wanted, because the Banshee's saying, hey, I've lured you all over here, I'm going to go straight into the natural. Fortunately, there is going to be a spore down there along with another queen, but that spore's going to take a little while to get into position, and this queen, or this uh, Banshee, once cloaked, is going and to be able to get a few finished. kills. So, very nice job by the Terran. The Zerg falling pretty well into that. Um, but now that that spore is burrowed, he's going to have vision of it. The queen needs to get on that Banshee right away, though. Because that Banshee's just racking up kill after kill after kill at this point. Up to 13. Now, mind you, there is a good chunk of Zergling kills in there, but... Yeah, certainly. All the same. But, certainly paying for himself. Earning his keep. Here. We're already at 9 workers. That is going to be including some of that Reaper crash earlier. And the Banshee is going to go down here. A little bit of miscontrol. We do see another Banshee coming in right now, right past the Zonaga Watchtower. But nothing saw it. There's Banshee yeah, over at the third. Siege coming out as well, and the third CC is actually down at the natural. Yeah, Banshee at the third actually putting more damage into these queens. Um, an Overseer coming over so that the two queens can't spot each other. There was a nice transfuse going down that saved one of the queens, actually. So, very well done. Um, the third is actually being flanked by two Banshees right now. So, if he presses in there, it's going to be not the best, because there is two queens and a spore, instead opting to go in and put some damage onto these roaches. And so... An two more factories building, and the armor going down. Oh, cool. So, there is an overseer inside of the uh, base of the, the Terran. The... Overseer has seen pretty much everything. It's a little bit odd that the Terran hasn't gone ahead and killed this yet. Two Banshees over here in the main going to be putting some more harass on. He's going after the gas version, which is I think he's hitting the extractor. You know, he's going to have to get out of here. Yeah, definitely. And that's a little bit unfortunate for the Zerg that he's not able to get drones into that extractor right now. Um, he's been having to pull his drones a lot and getting them out of the extractor, especially when you're going for something with gas heavy as infestors. It's huge on the extractor, but will it be enough? No. Yeah, extractor does go down. Uh, one of those banshees not even going to join it, unfortunate. But as you mentioned, we did see a total of three factories now down for the uh, Terran player. And with siege mode completed and an armory, we are going to be seeing some mech. The first two Thors are being. Uh, produced now along with uh, Hellions. They do not have the Blue Flame upgrade yet, but I would expect to see that relatively soon. Sure, we see the um, pathogen uh, glands being released, so there will definitely be a uh, some Infestor play coming here as well. Certainly. And we do see Hive and Spire going down at the same time, and as always, when you see those go down at the same time, that is indicative of Broodlords. Hive and Spire have the same production time, so if you build them, um, Manchi over here at the fourth going to be racking up some more drone kills. 
and uh, these are four unprotected drones right now, two spores in production, but they are not going to finish in time. All these drones are going to be forfeit, and that is very unfortunate. The Zerg having a very rough time being able to deal with this Banshee Harass, all the way up to 22 kills on workers for the Terran player. Very nice, effective harass. And look at that, a couple of changelings actually being dropped under the orbital command at the third command center. Uh, the Thor going to go ahead and blast each one of those. Hellion picks one up, and he's going to get oh. the land on that command center. But playing mech is an extremely gas-intensive build. And you can see the minerals are just piling up. Minerals are never going to be the limiting factor in mech play. It's always going to be gas, which is why we would often say that things like Hellions are free. Um, but not getting that third down until 15 minutes is not exactly where you want to be with mech. Yeah, and there's, I mean, a lot of Banshees were produced this game as well. At least, four, you know, five or six of them plus Cloak, and that's another couple of Thors that aren't going to be on the field. Certainly. And um, we really do want to see that the mech player is going to be getting a maxed out army before Broodlords come in. Um, but at this point, I'm not quite so sure. The, the Zerg's sitting on four bases with all of his gases taken, and... He's going to be able to be maxed out on Broodlords pretty soon here. The, the Terran is going to be moving out right now, but mech is one of those things that you kind of get one shot with. And uh, the Roaches are going to be engaging on Hellions here. The Roaches aren't going to fare very well in that scenario. Excuse me, the Hellions aren't going to fare very well. <laughs> roaches yeah, will do very well against Hellions. Um, we've never seen Blue Flame come out, which is a little bit interesting. They're just, they're just dropped now as well as uh, Vehicle Weapons 1. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at the armies here, and uh, we do have not that much of an army. We've got a bunch of infestors, and uh, it's going to be mostly roaches against these siege tanks, and these siege tanks aren't going to do very well at all. Uh, just infestors, really. No brunt to this army. The barracks is going to see those broodlords morphing in, and I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, Terran just goes on in and tries to snipe those down, but the AA is very limited. You would normally see uh, Vikings being produced with this, but the tanks are going to be moving into a sieging position on this fourth base. Well, there. I mean, that is a really uh, strong infester. I mean, there's a lot of energy on there's a lot of fungals, a lot of infested terrans, so oh, definitely. be careful with how he approaches that. And here comes the Zerg. Two Broodlords are going to be the main damage of this army, but all these stealth infestors are going to be lobbing down uh, infested Terran, but all those infestors are going to be taking so much damage from the siege tanks. Roaches coming and crashing down onto the Thors. The SCV is trying to get repairs, and uh, one of the Broodlords ends up going down. The siege tanks are going to be doing their best to cover any kind of push here, but the mech army is going to go down. It was just, just outnumbered by too, too much of a degree to have any real shot there. Yeah, and like I said, that uh, not having any Vikings really hurting the Terran at this point. I mean, and the, the, you got to think those tanks were in very disfavorable position. I mean, they were right on the open. There's nothing in front of them. They had no protection, and they were just all the Hellions were dead by that point as well. He had sacrificed the, the Hellions all to Roaches. And like I had said, with um, Mech, you really only get one shot with that army. You're not going to get the opportunity very often to remax on that army. It takes a very long time, and generally if it dies once, you know, the Zerg's going to counter push, just like the Zerg's doing right now. I would have seen, like to have seen the Zerg counter push even faster than this. And he does have a few Vikings out now. I'm seeing three. He's got another Thor out as well as a good chunk of tanks. Actually, probably more tanks than he had last time as well as Hellion. So he is actually in a reasonable position now. Um, yeah, definitely. He's in a better position than he was last time. Uh, the one thing that I'm not seeing is heavy upgrades. I'd like to see a little bit more in terms yeah, of... Yeah, even a Ghost now. Academy going down now, which is interesting. Yeah, nuke play is actually something that's relatively common in association with mech. Um, typically, you see it a little more in TVT rather than TVZ. But we'll see how it goes here. Center that's tower. A really quick point. If you notice, remember at the beginning of the game, he only had one um, SCV on the second gas. He now only has two, so playing mech with a with you know one less SCV on your gas is a, is, is a factor. Yeah, most certainly. That's uh, going to limit his total gas production by 12.5% off of uh, four gases. And uh, roaches do come crashing in here to Siege Tank, but the Siege Tank's going to light them up pretty good. 
I mean, that's what I was saying about Smackerel. I mean, the chokes on it are so so nice from kind of a tank perspective. I mean, the only, of course, the Broodlords can have a, a bit of fun with this as well as these uh, Broad Infestors, but yeah. it keeps the the, sea, or the uh, Vikings out front. And there goes oh, and the Vikings. Oh, caught totally out on its own. Oh, but look at those fungals. Beautiful fungal growths. He need to cover those Vikings. He cannot afford to lose all those. And the Terran Ooh. army does come in, but the Vikings are going to be going down for the most part. Thor is going to be hitting onto those Corruptors, but the Hellions are going to be absolutely annihilated by those Roaches. Blue Flame not going to be good enough for that armor. Those are not light units. They're not going to be taking very much damage. If Fungal's going down, all the Hellions are going to fall. The, the tanks Thor are sieging. A couple volleys are do a lot of damage, but losing those Vikings was a huge blow. Yeah, most certainly, especially since as soon as he stopped producing those Vikings, he went back to Banshee production. He's operating off of a total of three starports right now. Um, but only one of them has a reactor. The other two is going to be producing Banshees. And the Banshees are going to be very nice because the anti-air component in the Zerg army is relatively limited. Uh, sacrificing a couple Infestors to the Siege tanks, they're rather unfortunate, but we do see a dropship with three Blue Flame Hellions coming into the fifth over here. Hopefully it'll get uh, unloaded before it gets into range of those Swarc Callers, but these drones are highly unprepared, and there's going to be some serious burnt Zerg at this fifth base. Mm -hmm. Four more Thor's can He's actually getting uh, ship weapons on, which is interesting. Yeah, not uncommon to be getting uh, ship weapons for your Vikings and your Banshees. Unfortunately, these Hellions were dropped at the natural and then sent back Maybe with the main Maybe they were taken out of his rally group. Right? Exactly, that's exactly what it was. Um, we well, they will catch an Infestor here. Oh no, they'll just get pulverized by... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we do see the ghost coming out now, and so it'll be interesting to see if he's going to be going for nukes with those, or if he's just going to be trying to get EMP for the infestors. Siege tanks are going to be sieging up in the back, but um, plus two just barely starting right now. A little bit odd. Especially with all those ultras on the field, it's going to be hard to churn through that much Zerg, yeah. and then... Uh and then still get to those investors, but we'll see. Certainly, and the Vikings are going to be putting damage into the Corruptors right now, but there's no Broodlords in this army. There was a hard tech switch onto these Ultras, but with the number of Siege Shanks that are in here, I don't know how effective it's going to be. The Roaches are going to be piling in, but the Zerglings are going to be wiped out as well. There are only one Ultra list left, and the Ultras are dead, and that goes the entire ground force of the Zerg army. All these Corruptors are going to be sitting here doing nothing, taking damage from Thor's, and he needs to get those out of there. Those are valuable units that he needs if he's ever going to be making any more Corruptors or dealing with Banshees. And uh, he ends up losing about four of these these corruptors unnecessarily. But being on uh, five bases, six bases now, the Zerg can actually afford to reproduce a lot more so than the Terran can. The Terran hasn't even taken a fifth base yet, and the f or excuse me, he is on the fifth base. Well, that hatchery is gonna presumably drop up here. Siege tank is wailing away on it. Yeah, the siege tank unseeged actually doing more DPS than in siege mode. So. Great job not being sieged there, trying to get that hatchery down as fast as possible. And this dropship still over here that dropped down the, the Hellions. And oh, we have a Ling drop. Yeah, Ling's going to be dropped into the fifth base over here. Some mules there, and uh, no real static defense, but somehow... Oh, we actually like have a have fusion a core going down for the Terran player. And another space port. Oh, man. I would love to see some battle cruisers here. This Are you could, ready to do some battle cruisers? <laughs> I'm actually well, the Vikings are going to see this drop and do some damage to. We'll kill a few lings there. Ra oh man! Oh, it's going to catch that other lord by the looks of things before it can have its payload. All those lings are gone, and this one too. Yeah, at this point though, the Zerg's floating 3,600 uh, minerals. Not that big of a deal. Lings are essentially no. free. They're just larvae at this point. And uh, I think we're actually going to be seeing ravens rather than battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are extremely weak against corruptors, but ravens are highly effective against uh, the uh, broodlords. Broodlords, they are very. No, very I don't know. He's getting weapon rift. Uh, weapon refit. No, okay. We're going to be going for battle cruisers, so this is going to be real fun. Uh, Ghost going to be taking a couple shots in those broodlords, and here come the ultralists. The Thors are going to be putting in as much damage as they can to these ultras, but the siege tanks are going to be falling very quickly to these ultralists. The broodlords in the back trying to provide covering fire. The banshees, there's no counter for them, and the zerk is going to lose his entire attacking force at this point. The uh, Corruptors are going to be forced to cancel, but uh, once again, one of those going down, the last one, is going to escape very low health. Once that is morphed into a Broodlord, it will regenerate all of its health, but I don't know if the Zerg is going to last that long at this point. And we see a nuke, uh, nuke being trained there as well, as well as uh, cloaking. Yep. 
It's interesting. I mean, as soon as the fusion core drops, I mean that that's really the only tech path that opens up is battle cruiser. So very interesting that that's the solution. Certainly. And uh, Banshee's coming in here, trying to do some harass on the onto these trying investors. To assassinate a few of these. Uh... Good scan. Seeing the army composition of the Zerg here, saying, "Hey, I think I can handle that." And I agree, Mr. Terran. I think you can handle. It. That is well and personal. I was doing some sniping, just more assassination. Yeah, personal cloaking here on the uh, the ghosts, gonna be doing a pretty good amount of damage. There needs to be an overseer morphed at some point here. These ghosts, oh, and we do see a ghost sneaking in right now. It is going to be dropping a nuke, and the ghost is promptly. Killed. Oh, the overseers are gonna make it there in uh, plenty of time. <laughs> we do see an overlord going into the main right now, just gonna be scouting out what's going on. But where is this nuke? Do you see it? No, I'm looking all over it. Where? I think it's already died. Oh yeah, that that one went down. Yeah. Oh, there was a second one. Okay, the second one I didn't see. Uh, but I, I do see it's about to yeah. pop out. And uh, the Zerg gonna become crashing down in here. Very nice fungals. The Ultras are gonna be cleaning up all the ground army. The only thing left are the two Vikings and the two Banshees in the air. Fungals gonna be cleaning. The rest of those up, one Banshee and one Viking remain. There's no Infestor energy left. The Infestors are very susceptible to the Banshee fire, and the uh, Terran actually banking once again a ton of minerals, but just simply does not have the gas income to support what he's trying to go for at this point. Gases are going to be starting to mine out on the main. Uh, the one nice thing about not having maximum harvesters in that gas the entire game is that that gas is going to last a little bit longer. So, while the other one is mined out, that one is still going. It is still going. And so we do see that the uh, there has been an overlord that has dropped some zerglings onto the expansion up here at the 11 o'clock, the island expansion, taking care of the creep tumor. And uh, now, down here at the 5 o'clock expansion as well, the zerg is going to be taking both of those bases. Uh, plus three Terran ship weapons coming up, so those battle cruisers are going to be hitting pretty hard. And the ship armor as well is nearing completion. It's got about just under a minute left on it. Definitely. And so as soon as the Zerg spots that there are battle cruisers, he's going to be mass producing corruptors. Those things just absolutely roast. Oh, speaking of roast, Blue Flame Hellion over here trying to put a little bit of damage into the Zerglings. Instead, he's going to spot the army composition of the Zerg. Not a big problem there. And the uh, command center is going to be forced to be lifted, but unfortunately that thing will die to the, these corruptors. Uh, Zergling drop going to be going into the main right now. Going to be unloading eight of these Zerglings that should be fully upgraded. And Viking there to try to harass uh, the Overlord down, and three Zerglings do die inside of the Overlord. Terran is going to be pulling back the majority of his army to deal with this, and five Blue Flame Millions to clean up those five Zerglings, no problem. Uh, Battle Cruiser out here all by itself going to be falling extremely quickly to those corruptors and it falls immediately uh, the tank count and the Thor count is very low not nearly high enough to deal with this ground army and the investors gonna have to run away from the blue flag millions and there's a bit of a flank going on here but it looks like it's not gonna be nearly enough to hold up to that yeah definitely the uh, Banshee's really the only thing that are doing any kind of DPS to the ground army right now and I'm really surprised that all the investors are dead. Excellent job dealing with those investors, but the corruptors will clean up the banshees every last time. And a burrow on point. that altar list. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those silly animations. And uh, it looks like a Zergling army has cleaned up most of the economy over here at the 5th for the Terran. Uh, six mules being dropped here at the 6th. Going to get some strip mining going on. But being on a full 7 bases right now, the... Uh, Zerg is going to have a very easy time just completely out economying the Terran. At this point, the Terran being on that mech is so gas starved. And roaches are going to be coming in here with the support of corruptors. As soon as that command center lifts off, the corruptors are going to be putting in a ton of damage. But this one tank is going to be going down to roach fire. There's going to be a second tank in the black in the back, in addition to blue flame hellions. And they are going to be trying to push back the Terran army, but corruptors, like I said, just going to burn that CC to the ground, and actually choosing to retreat, going to let him reestablish that base with the repairs of the SCVs. Minerals ain't no thing to the Terran. He needs to move those back three tanks up here really quickly if he's gonna, gonna keep this secure, and they're just not moving at all. 
Yeah, I think the Zerg's going to be looking to crash right back into this again. Very interesting, the, the army composition of units that we've seen in this game has really changed. Pretty much every Zerg unit other than a Hydralisk has been used at this point. Oh, there's four broods in the back. Oh, it's a scary looking army. And the Corruptors are once again going to be taking down one of those Battle Cruisers. Battle Cruisers was proving very, very ineffective against Zerg. Like I said, this is where I was kind of concerned about him going for these. These Corruptors are extremely effective. Um, with the plus one armor that they have, they are going to be at uh, three armor, which reduces the damage from battle cruisers by about 40%, uh, I would say. Well, and with the battle cruisers, too, the, the interesting thing is that he, he went for Yamato Cannon right off the bat um, and not didn't get the behemoth reactor, so he's actually he wanted to get the Yamato research and then pump out the battle cruisers, which if you're going to go that way, you want to get the battle cruisers first so they can be accumulating energy in the meantime. Yeah. And uh, the Zerg is going to be taking down that uh, stick base for the Terran. There's essentially only one mining base left. There are two bases left that are still mining gas, but uh, actually the third just mines out of gas right there. And so at this point, there's only one base left for gas for the Terran, and the Terran is essentially dead in the water when it comes to gas. The uh, base over here at the 10 o'clock position is going to be mining minerals with about nine mules pulled down on it, but... Uh, there are a couple of Zerglings that have flanked it into and the ground army is going to be making its way over there. Well, the ground army consisting of exactly one Ultralisk. Mm -hmm. And here come the Blue Flame Hellions actually going to be roasting down that Actually going to roast that Ultralisk. Even. Yeah, not something that you see every day, but uh, Viking Ghosts and Battle Cruisers actually doing extremely well against the Corruptors over here. One uh, Ultralisk is going to be coming in to take down that Thor, but the uh, Broodlords are going to be able to provide a pretty good amount of covering fire. Uh, the ghosts are going to be the only thing left. They do not have energy for personal cloaking. Well, one of them does. The other ones are going to fall. And that is pretty much the entirety of the Terran army, all the way down to 86 supply against a still maxed out Zerg. And I do not see this going well for our Zerg or our Terran friend. No, the production is just so against him at this point. Definitely. Look at that. Look at that burr on the Infessor. Would have gone down, but just jumped under the ground against that blue flame. Yeah. Another uh, Remus Zergling's totally wasted, but it doesn't matter because the brood the, the brood lords are just firing away from up top. And fortunately there have been a couple of Vikings that have been pulled in here, but they're targeting the overlords instead of that last brood lord, which is a little bit of a slip up. And uh, we'll see if he's gonna be able to get some more fire under there. But well, this brood lord will not make it home. Definitely. Very, very slow. Not gonna be able to outrun that Viking. Planetary and guts all over the Manx statue. <laughs> Uh, Planetary Fortress is going to be charged down by Ultralisk right here. Ultralisk do exceptionally well against Planetary Fortress. It's pretty much their only use. Yeah, not even to try to repair with all those mules. Just, just close. Most certainly not. And uh, the mules are going to escape, so that's a little bit of a boon to our uh, Zerg friend here, or Terran friend here. He does have about six, or four, excuse me, uh, Vikings sitting in his main that haven't moved out. Yeah, that's relatively unfortunate. I think that there might be some kind of a bad rally on those. But I'm not quite sure. Terran One of them has seen a little bit of action because it's wounded and does have five kills. You know, and I, now they're moving. I wish that the Terran had dropped um, about six racks about five minutes ago. Yeah, and that's just, what I see. I mean, when you have, especially you're seeing off 5,000 minerals, if you, you know, you might as well pump marines if you're not going to be pumping anything else. Exactly. Throw down uh, reactors on those, start popping out marines 10 at a time or so. Even unupgraded, it's better than not using those minerals at all. And uh, here comes what I assume is going to be the final battle. The Thors are going to be taking damage on these uh, Ultralisks, but the Corruptors are going to be taking down the Vikings very fast. The only remaining portion is going to be two Siege Tanks and a bunch of Blue Flame Hellions. And even though we did see an Ultralisk get roasted earlier, Blue Flame Hellions are not the natural counter to Ultralisks. And the Blue Flame is doing a pretty good job kiting right now, but Roaches and Ultralisks are not going to be their friends. Even one Broodlord can be joining the party right here with these broodlings going to be taking down the rest of this base. Yeah, I mean, you notice he never did get, unfortunately, vehicle weapon two, or three. Yeah, really unfortunate. I think he really wanted to do a full transition into Sky Terran, but like I had said, or battle cruisers are not going to be the most effective thing against Zerg. You'll see it come up in TVT every once in a while, but against Zerg, not really what you want to get. Yeah, for sure. I mean, had those resources gone into further mech, more Vikings, more Banshees, more Thors, 
Might be a little bit of a different outcome right now. Yep, I, I completely agree. Something like a uh, battle creature. Interesting thing to note with the other roast. Oh, you're gonna catch these corruptors unaware, but uh, or excuse me, these infestors unaware. But unfortunately, we'll not get anything out of it. Yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of time from our uh, our Terran player before he gives this game up. But something interesting to note uh, when talking about an ultralisk. Ultralisk has six armor when fully upgraded, and a battle cruiser unupgraded, I believe, does nine damage per shot to ground but it shoots six or eight times. So the way that that works with it shooting six or eight times is that uh, the armor becomes exceedingly useful to fight against battle cruisers. So one of these ultralisks is probably only going to be taking about three damage per shot from a battle cruiser, and if that attacks three times, then the battle cruiser might be doing 16 damage per second. Each one of these ultralisks. Same thing with the corruptor. It's fully upgraded. They are going to be all the way at... Uh, Five armor? Is that right? Yeah, five armor. And the anti-air weapon of the battle cruiser is even weaker than the anti-ground. So Corruptor is just so, so strong as a counter to battle cruisers. Yeah, I mean Corruptors are, are very beefy in general. I mean, even Marines really struggle with them later in the game uh, when actually, they're fully upgraded. We actually and see the Vikings are really the only the thing. Five o'clock base. But there is Blue Flame Hellions that just roasted a uh, hatchery. So maybe there's a little bit of fight left in our Terran, but unfortunately his entire base is going down in flames right now. And no GG. And no GG, just leaves. Yeah, a little bit Had of reminiscent from our favorite North American Zerg. But uh, what did you think of that game overall, Shay? It was, it was an interesting game. It's really, I think, very instructive as far as macro goes. I mean, it shows exactly where, um, you know, the, the importance of gas if you're going to go mech and the importance of actually, even if you are going to go mech, not to just go every high gas unit that you have around you. Uh, it's really instructive in that regard. You saw him, he went for the battle cruisers because they were a you know, big pretty weapon and, and they turned out to really sink him in the end. Definitely. And um, I think it's also something that we, we've seen recently in things like uh, MLG Winter Championships and uh, Marine King Prime against Dong Regu. Marine King showing us that mech is very effective, but being heavy into gas, it is nice to supplement it with things like Marine King's signature unit, the Marine. Um, and with that uh, Marine Medivac Thor style that Marine King has been favoring against Zerg, I think he's shown exceptional progress in the metagame and uh, real, really a new path for Terrans to go down and ended up defeating some of the world's best Zergs, including Dong Ragu, with that very strategy. So, Yeah, I mean, you really take the legs out from under, under that mass fungal in the game if you have eight racks with reactors just chaining Marines indefinitely. Yeah, I mean, fungals are going to be very effective, but you need so many of them to deal with the, uh, with the Marines at that point. So, all right. Well, that was, a, that was a fun game. I really did enjoy that. And um, once I mean, again, one other little thing is that Nezzy did mention in the game that he had the island expansions, but I don't think that um, Lyra even scouted them. So another, you know, kind of free econ that he never even realized that he could have harassed or could have, you know, tried to do something about. Yes, yeah, certainly. There was very paltry defenses over there. Uh, only about three spine crawlers on the top one and no defense at the bottom. Well, a couple of roaches. How'd those get there? But again, nothing that's going to stop a, um, a banshee. Yeah, in either case. certainly. All right. Well, once again, this has been uh, Beef and Snow casting some games from reddit.com slash rcastit. The link will be in the description to this video. If you ever want your uh, your replays casted, please post them up there. We will be casting replays of Diamond and Higher that do go up there. And thank you to our uh, our submissions people here, either Lyra or um, the guy's name, Nezzy. And uh, I had a lot of fun. And I guess we will be back next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.